Today's book is My Raccoon Family, Adventures in My Backyard by Margaret Churchill. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. Once upon a time, there was a female raccoon who gave birth to six little babies in our house. Wait, what? Our house? That's not right. Raccoons live in dens outside in nature, not in houses. Well, that's what I thought too, until one day in March, a mother raccoon showed up in my compost bin. That's right, right inside of it. Can you imagine my fright? I was throwing out some vegetable scraps, and all of a sudden when I lifted the lid, there was this little raccoon's face looking back at me. Hey, I said, what are you doing in there? She just looked at me, so I carefully turned the bin on its side and out she walked. She then headed for our open cat door and disappeared through it down into our basement. Uh-oh, I don't think she should go there. We have what is called a drop ceiling in our basement. A drop ceiling is the space between the ceiling and the ceiling tiles, and it was this space into which she ran, making a lot of noise. What my husband and I didn't realise at the time was that she was frantically trying to find a place to have her babies, and she needed to make a nest in a hurry. Raccoons are really very good climbers, and she wasted no time climbing up the wall to get into the drop ceiling. We left the basement door open, hoping she would find her way outside after we went to bed. She did. On the next day, my husband put up some chicken wire in front of the opening to the drop ceiling, hoping to change her mind from going in there. We noticed the next day, however, she returned, pulled the wires apart and crawled in. After a few days, she changed her location and settled behind the furnace room wall and disappeared from view. She was very quiet, so we thought she had left us, but that didn't happen. Suddenly, one morning, we heard small sounds coming from the furnace wall through our living room floor. They sounded like small chirps. What is that? I asked. A bird caught behind the wall? No. Crickets? No. Can you guess what it is? You're right, baby raccoons. Mum had given birth. Oh my, now what do we do? Later, I realised this was the reason why she was in the compost bin. She was looking, looking for a place to have her babies. I'm glad she picked our house instead, aren't you? There's more room here, thankfully. We couldn't tell at first how many babies she had, because we couldn't see them. They were so very small. But now we could hear little chirps when they were hungry. I called the mother raccoon Mom. When Mom was hungry, she would come down from the furnace nest and come up our stairs to our landing in front of the cat door and peek around the closed hallway door. Hi there, she'd say. I'm pretty hungry. Can I have some more food? So I left a bowl of clean water and another bowl of kitty kibble, which she liked. We own four cats, and I know from previous encounters that raccoons would creep inside the house and eat what was remaining in all their dinner dishes. Mum was so quiet that you didn't even know she'd been in the house, but the cats did. How did I know she was in the house? Easy. I looked at our cat, Roxy. Roxy would give us an intent look each time Mum was in the kitchen. We couldn't see her, but our cats, with their sensitive hearing, knew she was there. Here is what I learned. Each time I brought her food, I would talk to her. How are you today, Mum? I would ask. How are your babies? She just kept chomping while looking at me. I knew from her look that she knew I was trying to communicate with her, so I talked to her a lot. I don't stay long, and that was important because you didn't want to scare a wild animal. You have to learn to give them their space so they will get used to you and their new surroundings. And so on and so on it went. Pretty soon I had earned her trust and she would come to look for me when she was hungry. She was a good girl. She never tore up anything and was very obedient, which surprised me because she was a wild animal. She reminded me of a dog in some ways, because when I told her, I'm coming, she would race downstairs ahead of me, looking behind to make sure I was following her. Then she would hide between the two sofas in the basement until I put the food down and stood back. I always stood away from her, and then she'd come forward to eat. It was funny to watch. When she ate, it was like she had a rubber mouth. I don't think raccoons like to chomp as, as much as chew their food. I stayed with her for a few minutes each time, 
and then said my goodbyes for the night. Then Mum would go back into her nest to feed her kits and settle in. Yes, that's what you call baby raccoons. Kits. They are like kittens, only they are not kittens. We'd hear the babies chirp in the morning, and I have to tell you, kids, that they were the best babies ever. Why? Because for the rest of the day they slept. Even when I was vacuuming or running the washing machine next to them in the basement, they slept all day. Wow, that was amazing for me to learn. They slept all day. At night they would chirp for Mom to feed them, and that was how the days went by. Now, some people may tell you that raccoons are messy creatures, and that they upset garbage and damage rooftops to try to get into your attic. We never found that with Mom at all. Perhaps it was because we fed her and talked to her. I knew right away that she understood us, and that she was a very special raccoon, and we were happy to have her stay with us. About two months later, the babies got big enough to leave the nest and came out into the basement floor. I noticed that Mum would give me a low warning growl if her babies were out when I was bringing her food. It's okay, Mum, I'd say. I'm just bringing you some food. I'm not staying. If you are patient and kind, soon they will trust you as Mum trusted me. I never touched her and at first she would watch me intently. After a while, she knew I wasn't there to hurt her or try to pet her. After all, she was a wild animal. Her babies were the cutest things ever. Mum had six. Yes, six babies. Wow, that was a lot of work for poor Mum. No wonder she was tired. I'm exhausted, she'd say. Have you ever tried to keep all six babies in one place? It's not easy. Baby raccoons love water. One little raccoon looked up at me once and then down at the water bowl and then back at me and said, Look, lady, look, see what I can do. I put both my front paws in the water and swished them around. Look, lady, look, are you watching me? I am very clean. Then I take my back feet and put them in the water and look, lady, look. Then I drink the water. Aren't I smart? Well, yes, you are, I laughed. You are quite talented. So why do raccoons wash their hands before eating? Well, it makes the food taste more delicious. It stimulates the food for them. In addition, their hands are always clean. As I mentioned, baby raccoons are called kits and their mom feeds them until they are 16 weeks old. That's a very long time. At that age, she teaches them to find food for themselves. The babies did act like little puppies or kittens. They always played with one another, pulling on mom's fur and tumbling about. They really do have a good time. I love to watch them play and they love to show off. In May, Mum would go outside on her own and ask her babies to stay put until she got back. When she did, they were so happy to see her that they would jump on her and tumble with each other. One brave little guy growled at me once when I checked in on them, and I laughed. Oh my, you are brave. You got that right, lady. You don't want to mess with me. As the kits got older, they became more rambunctious and curious about their new surroundings. When I would come downstairs in the morning, there were pillows scattered everywhere and dirty water from all their cleaning, so I always replaced it with fresh water. The babies and mum would be asleep during the day, so I would quietly go about cleaning up. Even when mum had to go to the washroom, she would go on the newspapers I put out, so cleaning was a breeze. Wow, I didn't know that was something wild animals would remember to do, but she did. Pretty soon, Mum started to take her kids out with her at night. Every night after they'd leave, I would collect their food dishes and then the next day, Mum would come asking for food. She would stand up on her back feet and put her paws on the window, looking through the glass. OK, Mum, I'd say, I'm coming. Now that the babies were getting older, my husband asked a very clever and wise lady who worked for a local wildlife centre what we needed to do to ensure they would be safe and not get hit by a car. We were told that if a raccoon has five or more babies, this means that the mother is an experienced mom and not a new mother who only has a few babies. Experienced moms are the best because they know their territory very well and so they can travel it safely. Raccoons can also have up to five dens or homes in their lifetime and that's a lot of moving around. If you ever look after raccoons, know that they won't stay with you forever. I mean, could you live on kitten kibble day in, day out? Probably not. You'd want some fresh vegetables, insects, and perhaps a grub or two. When people don't like raccoons, they call in pest control people to move, remove them, 
but I've learnt that that's not a good idea. If you remove raccoons to another place, they will be unfamiliar with their new surroundings and get very upset. They try to find their way back home to their territory, and that's when some may be hurt or hit by a car. I wouldn't want my mother raccoon and babies to go through that, would you? As the babies got bigger, they started to eat the kibble by themselves. Mum would always grunt at them to move them away from the plate so she could have a bite, and they always listened to her. Eventually, Mum took them outside. I am happy to say that we have a large backyard, so they were able to play about. One night, just before bed, I was outside to bring in the cushions, and I heard some crying. Uh Uh-oh. One little baby had climbed our fence that led to our neighbour's house and got scared. Before I knew it, there was Mum coming from the house. She went around our pond and right over to the fence. She spoke quite lowly and the baby crawled down, while Mum turned and led him back into the house. That was quite remarkable. One sunny Saturday morning, I was outside reading my book. With coffee in hand, Mum came out with me with one of her babies. Being nocturnal or night-seeing animals, raccoons aren't often seen during the day, but here she was. She came over by my chair and just sat beside me. It was wonderful. I could just hear her say, Phew! Trying to keep all these babies together is hard work. They're so playful. I chatted with her and she and her one baby eventually went back into the house. Thanks for the chat, Mum. On another occasion, a friend of mine came over for dinner. We were sitting outside when it was dark and all of a sudden my friend jumped up from her chair and said, Oh, wow, something very big and very maternal just brushed by me. She has big energy. I got up to see if it was Mum coming back to the house, but I couldn't see her. She might have run downstairs to her kits and I just missed her. Another day, while I was putting out some recycling into the bins at the side of our house, my black cat, Sheba, was there. She stopped and looked at me. You had better see this, she said. See what? I asked. Follow me, she said. So I did. As we rounded the corner to the backyard, there they were. All the babies, six in total, were climbing up our cedar trees, and others were running all over the backyard. Sheba looked at me and said, What are those? Should they be here? Can you make them go away? Ha ha, I laughed. No, Sheba, this is our raccoon family out to explore. Don't worry, they won't be here forever. Sheba didn't like that answer. They are kind of strange looking. I don't know any cats that look like that. Hmm, I thought as I looked around, wondering where was Mom. Hey, little ones, where is your mother? Just then, I heard a very peculiar sound. It was something I never heard before. I looked up and sure enough, way, way up in the trees was Mum. Her feet were dangling over the sides of the branches. She was watching her kids. Oh, there you are. Okay, Sheba, let's go inside and leave them alone. After that, most nights Mum would take them out, but they always came back through our cat door and downstairs to their beds. Our poor cats. We have four and they were afraid of these new animals. I had thought that raccoons might attack cats, but Mum and her kits never did. They really weren't interested in them at all. Well, all except one little baby who I saw growl and try to look fierce at our eldest cat, Dutch. But Dutch just looked at him as if to say, what's your problem, little one? The baby would then run off, which made me laugh. He tried hard to act tough, but he was still so small. On June the 1st, Mum and her kits moved out. I knew they couldn't stay forever, but I did enjoy their company and missed them. Be careful what you wish for, the universe says. Two days later, they all returned, and then three days later, they left again. Remember what I told you about having other homes? Well, Mum must have found another place for them to stay. Either that, or they were just so doggone tired of eating kibble. Raccoons like variety, so grubs, vegetables and insects, which I'm sure are healthier for them, and are what they would prefer. The month of June would have the family return for a day or two, and then gone for three days, and back for one, and off again. Sometimes only Mum would return for something to eat, and then she'd be gone. On June the 23rd, my husband and I had one last meeting with our raccoons. It was around 8pm. My husband likes to read outside in the garden before it gets dark, so he was there reading. 
I was in the house in one bedroom folding laundry. The window faces the backyard and beside the window is a large cedar tree. I heard some noise and looked outside. There was Mom and all her six babies playing on the grass. They were tumbling all over each other like little tumbleweeds and even Mom joined in on the fun. It was lovely to watch. Then Mom ran over to the tree next to my window and started to climb up. I talked to her through the window. Hi, Mom. She stopped climbing and looked at the window, but I didn't think she could see inside. She climbed all the way to the top of the tree. I went outside to see her. Again, she was watching her babies frolicking around. Her legs were dangling over the sides of the branches, just like Sheba and I had seen previously, as she watched from up high. She must have trusted us not to interfere because we just watched. It was magical. It was like watching our own little show. I had to take some pictures. Hey, who wants to go for a swim? Come on, last one in is a rotten egg. The kits would climb halfway up the trees, tumble with each other on the ground, and then run into our small pond. That was the cutest part. The pond is shallow, but oh, how they love the water. They would run to our feet, sniff us, and we'd say, oh, no, 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 don't bite. Watch our toes. And they would scatter all about. Pretty soon it got quite dark, so my husband and I decided to go inside. The raccoons left. Since then we could see the raccoons from time to time, but not every day. One time, when we had a big thunderstorm with lots of lightning, Mom and her babies came back and hid in the garage. In the morning I would hear them, and so I put down some water and food for them. The babies were now beginning to eat, and would wash their hands and then scoop up some food. Then they took a nap until it got dark. It was around 9pm when they went away again. I never heard them leave, they were so very quiet. The other day, my husband said he thought the raccoons were back. I went in the garage to throw out some paper in our recycle bin and heard a little growl. Hey mom, how are you? Just then, a wee little baby poked her head out from the cushions that were stacked at the back of the garage. I felt that this was a female because she was smaller than the others. Being a curious girl, she ran along the beam, straight overhead to where I was standing at the door. I said, hello, cutie pie, and then she ran off. I always remember this little raccoon. When all the babies were in the basement one time, I came down to feed them. This little one lay on the rug with her head on her paws, just watching me. Oh, honey, I said, what's the matter? Mom's mad at me, she said. I wouldn't worry, sweet pea, I said. I'm sure she's just tired. In front of our house we have a small porch with a window. We leave it open just a bit and the cats come and squeeze between the window and the screen. They sit there until we notice them or they meow to come in. Well now Mum started to do the same thing. She is too big to fit in this small place so she just sticks her head there and waits until we look and see her. Hi Mum, go to the breezeway and I'll feed you. The breezeway is the closed space between the house and our garage where there is a special cat door through which they enter. I'll feed you. Mum was such a smart girl because that's exactly what she did. Our story does not end with the raccoons leaving us forever. Some nights while lying in bed we can hear them scampering over the roof and calling into the night. Sometimes there are a lot, sometimes just one. What I have learned from them is this. When you have a wild animal coming to visit, remember they are not like your pets. You have to be kind and friendly to them, but keep a distance until they are used to you. Remember, they are as afraid of you as you are of them at first. Talk to them always in a soft voice. Say hello and see what comes to mind. Do they answer back? Do you feel what they are trying to tell you? You're probably right, you know. Raccoons are very, very special animals. Don't fear them. They will not hurt you unless you hurt them. Then they will be afraid and wary of you. But if you are kind to them, you will see in time how friendly and fun-loving they can be. You will see them grow from tiny balls of fur into these wonderfully talented tree-climbing, water-loving animals who love to go tumbling with their siblings and friends. If you are good to them and take care of them, they will be good to you and show you how much fun it is having them at your home. And you don't have to worry, they will move away in time. It's just nice for them to know they have a sanctuary to return to if they need to. Just think, that could be your home. 
The most important lesson of all, be kind to all wild animals. They are your friends and you will learn so much more from them just by watching and talking to them. They will invite you to their world and that's a very magical place to be. I send silent prayers that my raccoon family will live a full and fun-filled life that is free from harm. Raccoons can live up to 10 years, did you know that? The mothers can have several litters too, so I pray that they are protected always and that someday people will come to regard them with the same respect and compassion as I have for them. There is much we can learn from raccoons if we greet them as one of our family members, our special wildlife family.